All right, good afternoon. Ahoy, quality management people. Uh, welcome to this episode of our quality solution series where we're gonna talk leveling up your supply chain quality. And we thank you so much for joining us today. As always, all registrants will receive a link to this recording. We are recording. Um, so, and then also be sure to use that go to webinar panel <clears throat> if you have uh, any questions or thoughts you wanna share during the presentation. Um, we'd love to see that in the questions panel. And then we'll have some time at the end to uh, do some live uh, Q&A with you guys as well. My name is Angela Anderson. I'm product marketing manager with ETQ, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Tom, the supply chain quality meister Barlow. <laughs> Tom is one of our of ETQ's in-house quality experts uh, and strategic solution engineer. Um, he has a whopping 20 years of experience at ETQ helping quality professionals uh, just like you all over the world, um, getting the most out of their investment in QMS technology. How the heck are you doing today, Tom? I'm doing really well. Thank you very much, Angela. You ready to talk supplier quality? Let's Let's have this conversation. Looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's um, let's kick things off um, and start out um, just talking extending quality management beyond the factory walls. So having having suppliers uh, is the way of the world. It's globalization. Um, it's the fast track to efficiency and cost savings. You know, find find the people who can do what you need better, faster, and cheaper than you. Um, you share a lot with them. They account for a lot uh, in the product value chain equation. 80% uh, or more in cases like uh, like automotive. Um, you spend a lot of time and money on managing them. You do your best to set expectations. You aim to build trust. Whether consumers admit it or not, um, quality plays a leading role uh, in the purchasing decisions they make. So you work with your suppliers on that shared promise to consistently deliver the quality customers require but it's all fraught with risk and competing forces, isn't it? Um, some of these within our control, others outside of it. Maintaining that shared promise of quality is definitely more challenging than ever. In our uh, post-pandemic climate change era, um, things are just not going back to the way they were. Um, supply chain and procurement is now kind of inextricable from sustainability goals and the like. Um, Looking at that headline in the upper right, uh, this Deloitte study uh, that is mentioned uh, in this headline, um, it's the 2023 Global Chief Procurement Officer Survey. Um, there was a couple of interesting kind of key takeaways from this. Um, give it a Google um, if you're interested to, to read more, but um, in this report, uh, Chief Procurement Officers, um, that's CPO, um, report that top priorities for their businesses um, include operational efficiency, ESG and corporate responsibility, digital transformation, and cost reductions. That sounds like a lot of the language we use in, in quality and quality 4.0. Um, the other takeaway I wanted to share um, are some numbers here. So uh, increasing um, collaboration with suppliers was the top strategy for delivering value. Big on the radar. Great topic for us today. 61% um, of executives listed this um, as a top strategy, followed by investing in digital transformation, um, there's that again, <laughs> and enhancing demand management capabilities, uh, another 30%, 37% mentioned that, and then another 36%, um, so over a third, said they were negotiating with existing suppliers to drive value. So really top on people's minds how to make get more out of supply chain, how to improve quality, how closely, um, yeah, I just kind of asked a bit rhetorically, how, you know, how closely does that, or pop it in the questions uh, chat if you have some thoughts on this, how closely does that align with what you see in your organization? Is there a focus on supplier quality? Um, feels like now is a great time to expand quality management programs into supplier quality. And uh, I'll, I'll pose this thought as well. It seems, you know, ironically, um, it seems at times that you know a focus on enterprise quality management could provide a 
kind of a holistic approach to addressing many of these um, challenges that are out there, yet quality sometimes is only the headline when something goes wrong. So, you know, as, as quality professionals, we know uh, the power of quality as a discipline. Um, we know the power of it. We just have to keep fighting the good fight. Um, and like footwear maker Keen there in the upper left um, says, you know, do our best to control the controllables. So those headlines, you know, they can feel overwhelming, um, but what are some of those controllable challenges? Um, can you relate to our, uh, our person, Sarah here, uh, who has a hand in um, supplier quality? You know, our, our processes are very manual. My engineer spent way too much time chasing paperwork. The supplier data is all over the place. We've got multiple systems. It's hard to know what the master list is, what's most current and accurate especially if you've got multiple ERPs um, across different sites. Tracking and resolving issues is sometimes maybe always difficult. <laughs> uh, hey, our communication isn't great. We know that, um, you know, neither is our track record for closing scars. Um, our processes are just not working. Um, it can take days to compile and analyze supplier performance data. Um, and even then there's gaps in the data and we kind of use our gut feel to, to fill in the gaps. These challenges, um, maybe some of them feel familiar. Uh, they kind of become the building blocks for where to start uh, with supplier quality. So, um, so all that said, Angela, how do you fast forward to the big impacts? You know, we want to get to the answers here. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's, um, there's usually no fast tracking that beginning phase. Um, I once heard someone say, um, technology won't fix a broken process. Um, and that feels uh, like it rings pretty true. It's like you got to go through the pain of laying it all out on the table with all your stakeholders present um, and kind of work, work through it from the beginning, break it down and to build it back up. Um, the good news uh, in addressing supplier quality, though, is that it can apply, uh, I believe, many of the things you as a quality professional in your organization probably already know how to do um, using tools you may already have. And, you know, in many of your case, um, it could be ETQ Reliance um, or maybe you're considering it. Um, so when we talk about extending quality management into supplier quality, we may be dealing with uh, a whole other team outside of quality, like your procurement team. Um, and we find it's helpful to aim towards common objectives to gain that buy-in for that collaboration. And we encourage clients we work with to put those objectives into what we call the language of business, which of course is primarily you know, cost and risk. Um, see, it's already looking familiar. We all know uh, as quality uh, people, um, we know all about cost of quality. And if not, uh, shameless plug, we have another recent webinar that we did that talks all about cost of quality. So be sure to check that out on the ETQ website. Um, so from here, we can start uh, identifying some of those activities that can be translated into time and money, uh, into terms of time and money, um, breaking down, uh, you know, breaking it down and, and putting a number on each activity. Um, you know, give, gives you that number. When you have numbers, you can add them up. When you add them up, you've got the data and insights that can translate into that bottom line impact. So, for example, you know, standardizing and centralizing processes. You know, how what's your onboarding process look like for our suppliers? You know, do you have that consistent documentation? Is it the same? You know, for for every supplier, you're comparing kind of apples to apples. Um, what can be provided? Do you have clear specifications? Um, What's your SCAR process look like? Uh, is there a lot of kind of email back and forth and getting clear communication? Um, you know, like we saw with Sarah there, that master list. Um, you know, what what are the time you know, sp you know, spent spinning wheels, redoing work, chasing down paperwork? Um, you know, there are real numbers to that um, when you're not able to resolve issues and you know, spending time on that administrative overhead. Um, oops, my clicker got stuck. There we go. <laughs> um, so also, you know, what if, you know, what about um, inspections? You know, there's some efficiencies to be gained there. How how much time, um, you know, and resource are you spending on um, inspecting everything that comes in the door? Well, if you knew a particular supplier's um, performance record and 
traditionally they're high performers, maybe you don't need to inspect every every single piece. How do you get that communicated to the folks who are doing those activities? Um, you know, and, and going to those folks to understand, you know, how much time they are spending, that's, you know, another number for the equation um, where, you know, if you're bringing it into a, a quality system where these things can be automated, um, you start to kind of build that case. On the risk side, thinking through the impacts, um, you know, having those clearly defined and communicated requirements and having confidence in the fact that you're only onboarding those, you know, to the best of your ability up front, you know, only onboarding suppliers that you know can meet the requirements. Um, using supplier rating or supplier scorecard to maintain that accountability, giving visibility um, to all stakeholders, holders, including the supplier, um, to know where they where they are stacking up uh, in their performance, and you know, feeding that information to your procur procurement team um, that should uh, you know prick their ears up in the conversation um, that quality has everything to do with them um, when it comes to you know making good procurement decisions, um, and then you know the power of Tom's going to talk a lot about this you know the power of a technology platform is collecting all this data um, as it happens. So there's no going back to find it up, you know, after the fact and compile it and do all these manual things. It's collecting as it happens. You have on-demand access to make faster decisions, um, get that current, you know, on-demand snapshot of where things are at. Um, and then, uh, the last one I want to mention here is a supplier portal. Um, and I've got this little equation, supplier portal equals better supplier relationships. So it's a fantastic way to securely bring your suppliers into your quality process. Um, it's going to take that relationship to a whole new level. When you involve them, give them the visibility, give them access to all the information to respond in a timely manner to a SCAR, to see what their you know, supplier performance numbers look like, um, you know, there, there's no doubt, there's no question, um, and it's clear, you know, if you're not performing, you're no longer going to be a supplier, or, you know, what can we do to improve our relationship um, over time? Um, so that power of being able to communicate and collaborate with clarity and timeliness uh, is really powerful. Resolving issues faster, fewer issues doing business, preventing nonconformances, getting into pre-production. Um, better product quality in the out, you know, at, at the other end of manufacturing, happier customers. So, you know, all of those things have, you know, a, a, a cost, a, a time value, um, and addressing some sort of risk. Um, and when you identify all of those, you know, that, that rolls up into, you know, a, an, an impact that quality can have um, across the business. So the question is out there, what will you do with all that extra time and money? Uh, okay, so just a couple of things before I get it uh, over to Tom here. Um, one thing uh, or another thing we always kind of talk about um, at ETQ is our quality journey. So this is kind of our, our maturity scale uh, as folks kind of onboard a quality management system or kind of transition into a platform like ETQ Reliance. Um, and there's these phases of kind of starting, you know, begin at the beginning. Um, and it feels like, you know, in a, as an extension of your core QMS, we can apply these same things to expanding into your supplier quality arena. So, be, you know, start out, uh, build the foundation, Take a look at your supplier list. How are you going to organize it? Who, where are, do all the lists live? How are you going to bring them together? Um, there's some integrations with ETQ Reliance, um, you know, with ERP that can really kind of make that a lot easier to manage. Um, thinking about audit, your supplier audits. Maybe you have, you know, corrective actions in-house, but let's apply that now to supplier corrective action and building on that. Um, you know, into you know, the receiving an inspection activity, building up your supplier rating um, scorecard. Uh, and I mentioned the ERP integrations as well, um, not replacing necessarily uh, with something like Reliance, but um, certainly complementing those systems and giving a central view um, at central source of truth. 
and then expanding um, the supplier portal that we um, we talked about and building in other processes and down the line um, and you know how will this transform your organization um, in the bigger picture uh, having suppliers truly invested in that shared promise um, of of the quality standards uh, that you set all right so uh so to kind of further um reinforce uh, some of those points you know quality does touch every aspect of the product life cycle um, including supplier quality as we're talking about today um, and that closed loop quality system has feedback loops kind of built in all across this life cycle um, that can really help drive that continuous improvement and that that holistic approach to going after um, you know the these these challenges and you know, we looked at those headlines earlier. Um, the more you can do to control those controllables in-house gives you more resilience um, in the face of the challenges out in the market that may be beyond your control. And having quality at, at the center of that, the discipline of quality um, is very powerful. And with technology, it gives you the platform to scale that, scale your processes, harmonize, centralize, um, across your global enterprise. So uh, with that uh, bit of an intro there, um, I did kind of ramble on longer than I thought I would. <laughs> Appreciate you hanging it. Well, we did have one comment. Uh, Glenn says, we focus on both supply and product quality as well as quality and product delivery. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, kind of that, that handoff to the customer, making sure everything uh, is going to go go right for them. Um, the the further a, you know an issue goes along the line, the more expensive it is to address. So um, very important to pay attention to those things. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tom. He's going to orient you to the Reliance platform um, and talks about um, aspects of the system that are going to allow you to transform how your organization handles supplier quality. Angela, thank you so much for that introduction. That was great information. Uh, you know the one the one thing that a tool is going to allow you to do is to pull it all together to allow you to communicate and collaborate and have a global system that has everything across the entire enterprise within your organization easily accessible and reportable so ETQ reliance is actually a web based workflow based business process platform that's designed to automate business processes we have about 42 pre-configured applications that we pre-configure for our customers that we can we then sell and package in different what we call application sets. It's all on one highly configurable platform. So if your requirements are different than what we pre-configure, your non-technical administrators can use a tool called the EDQ Designer to either modify existing applications by adding new fields to forms or modifying the business process and you can even use our platform to build new applications on top of that it's also hosted in the cloud so it's extremely easy to access it's easy to maintain because we do all the maintenance for you we manage everything on the back end for you and another thing that's important about it being hosted in the cloud is that it's not on your servers behind your firewall which means it's readily accessible to your i just realized my camera's a little out of focus here it makes it easily accessible to your external users like suppliers and contractors. So that collaboration on the platform is going to facilitate the communication and an improvement in quality over time. The way we offer the platform is that we have a core set of applications and Angela mentioned a few minutes ago, the quality journey that organizations go through. This is designed to help you mimic that and you can acquire different parts of the system as your quality journey goes. So you can start with the core applications. These are the things that you would expect to see in any process. You know, audits management, for example, you might audit your suppliers. There may be documentation for suppliers, et cetera. Uh, so all of this is, is where you might start in your journey. The system is platform-based and it has a set of utilities. And then we have these other application sets over here that you can choose to add later or initially, depending on your, your set of requirements. So for the supply chain application set that's highlighted here, you can see that this includes four additional applications that would be available in the platform. The nice thing about the platform is since all the apps look and feel exactly the same, it's going to function just like every other app that you've already got. And it also interacts with those other apps. And in a moment, I'll be telling a story 
that talks about how those apps can tie together into a solution for supply chain quality management. The platform itself has these six we call genetics, which are capabilities that are infused across all the applications on the platform. And I'm just gonna quickly run through them because this really speaks to the power of the platform and the ability to make it yours and make it work for your own organization. I already addressed the configurability of the system. Not only can you use our designer to configure existing applications that we actually used initially to pre-configure the apps that we package for you and our customers, you can also create your own apps on the platform to automate any other business process. Connectivity speaks to the relationships between processes. So yes, it's important that each process has its own workflow with business rules that can be configured to automate your own processes in our system, but it's almost more important to think about the relationships between those processes. So how, how does a product nonconformance lead to a supplier corrective action, for example, or how does it lead to a risk assessment or an internal corrective action, just as an example? So it, it's, it's designed to, in, to capture in real life what is really a continuum, a continuum of processes that occur in concert with each other. It's not just a set of separate silos that are happening separately. Of course, we understand that you have other systems. So ERP systems typically would have a suppliers, products, customers, all kinds of other important information. You might have a human resources systems that has a current list of all your people and employees in the company. Uh, PLM systems, CRM systems, customer relationship management, these all have things going on and they're con they will continue to be used in your organization because those tools are best in class for the processes that they, that they uh, automate. However, our strategy is to integrate with those systems so the QMS and the compliance management side, which happens to be our area of expertise, can be managed and easily configured within our system, but you can still leverage that external information from other systems as well. Contextual awareness, as your organization grows, you can identify your organizational structure. So you might have a corporate level and then different business units under that and then different continents and different countries and then different physical facilities. You can really define your organizational structure in as many levels or branches as you want. So as you define that information, when you start tracking things in our system like corrective actions or product nonconformances or whatever the type of record it might be, supplier corrective actions, you can associate them with different levels on the hierarchy or different individual locations. And that location exists on the, on the user's profile. So when a user from your organization logs into our system, the system knows where they are in the organization, what their level is on the hierarchy and can be dynamically filtering information so that people can only see the stuff that pertains to them. So that's interesting and very powerful from a, you know, from an, at least from an organizational perspective one of the things I mentioned about implementing a system like this is it allows you to pull it all together into one harmonized platform. So that contextual awareness, while each person may not see everybody else's stuff, someone up that's higher in the hierarchy, a manager or director or whatever that has to do analytics reporting and analysis would easily be able to see everything across the entire organization. And because everyone was using the same fields on the same forms with the same categories to track different things, there's no manual intervention in analytics and reporting. So I'm not gonna ask this question to us since we're in a webinar, but you, you guys probably all deal with some degree of, of manual reporting and the challenges and the time it takes to pull all that manual information together. What our system does and what the harmonization that comes with the capabilities of contextual awareness does is it allows us to control the ent entry of the data in the, in the input form uh, process, someone creates a record and categorizes it, it controls the data entry and makes sure it's in the right format. And therefore the reporting is almost a byproduct of that because of the fact that the data is already in the right format. So you can pull it all together. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about supplier information also. Speaking of contextual awareness, that same functional capability lends itself to another platform genetic that we have called external collaboration. This is where you can extend the hierarchy to include external users like suppliers and contractors. And when you do that, the suppliers could actually have usernames in our system with that location identified on their, pro their profile. So therefore, when they log into our system, and I'll show an example of this when I log in in a few minutes, they would have filtered access to only the information in the system that pertains to them. They can still participate in any workflow process that you want them to, 
The system can automatically assign them things with hyperlinks to the record through, uh, through an email. The system would show them a list of their current open assignments. It would send reminders as due dates approach to the supplier without having to even bother you using our platform escalation tool. So the, the, the power of the platform is you're leveraging standard functionality, but now you're you're extending the use to external users and not having to depend on someone else to follow up like a quality engineer that's responsible for following up with a supplier that had something due next Friday. So in this case, once the system assigns it, you can use your brain and think about other things that you have to worry about, not even worrying about that open issue because the system is gonna track it for you. The final genetic is what we call anywhere access. So yes, our system is web-based and yes, you can use virtually any browser to access it, including browsers on your tablet like this. So if, for example, if you were online and you wanted to go conduct an audit or do something um, in a facility somewhere, you could log into the system's web version on this device and you could complete your audit or your supplier audit. You could use the onboard camera to take pictures and get attach those pictures to the audit record, et cetera. But we also have a mobility app that you can download for Apple or Android devices on phones or tablets. And that gives you the additional capability of working offline as well as online. So if you're gonna to go to a supplier, you know one of the challenges that sometimes people have is they're not sure if they're gonna have accessibility to the web through broadband where they go. So connection may be questionable. In that case, you can download the audit to the local machine, the local phone. It checks it out of the web version. You can complete it offline, including taking pictures and using the voice to text functionality to record your observations and you know, just like when you send text messages to friends and family. And then when you're finished with that audit, you can upload it to the web version again. So these six genetics are really crucial because these are capabilities that give us the ability, and Angela is going to talk about some, I think, two good customer use case examples in a few minutes of where how they've actually leveraged this. They have pull it all together and they have more visibility into the information and the types of issues that they're having with suppliers because of the fact that it's all easily reportable within our within our platform. So that's the genetics, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to cover that. So now this is the story, kind of a high level solution uh, story that talks about how several of our processes fit together on the platform within ETQ Reliance. The first thing is we have this utility called suppliers, materials, and chemicals. It's designed to track all your suppliers and all the products and services that they provide. You can integrate that with virtually any other system like an ERP system. And we have some customers, as you can think about, as imagine a larger organization, and keep in mind, any, but any organization of any size can leverage our system. You don't have to be a large company, but some of the benefits are compounded just because of the fact that some of the challenges are much more difficult because of the disparate systems that they might have in place. So in this case, we have several suppliers that have multiple ERP systems, so they don't have a single supplier list. They just don't know. One, one side of the organization has an issue with a supplier, and the other part of the organization starts going into business and working with that same supplier, being completely blind to the fact that they have issues in the other part of the organization. So with the use of our system and the ability to integrate with multiple ERP systems to, to end up with a single supplier list, that gives you a single source of the truth. So therefore, each part of the organization has visibility into that information. But often what happens when you onboard suppliers, so not only can we just synchronize with your ERP system, we can also be the workflow process that's involved with qualification and approval of your suppliers. That's another challenge that we often see. Organizations, based on the type of supplier, have certain information that has to be captured by that supplier. So you might have questionnaires, you might have to have them provide you with documentation or certificates or this or that. So think about a workflow-based process that allows you to automatically assign those things to certain types of suppliers based on the category and based on the country and based on the type of product that they provide to you. And the system will automatically repeat and, and repeatedly, that's the beauty of the configuration is, it'll repeat the process the same way for every type of supplier of the same way. So it would send questionnaires to them. They would receive an assignment with an email with a hyperlink to this questionnaire record. They would fill it in. They would then attach things to the record and then send it on to the next step, which would then send it on to somebody internally within your organization with that submission. And then the record itself becomes a, a repository of that information. You don't have to use SharePoint. You don't have to use your corporate S drive to store documentation as many people do. And you guys on the phone might be nodding your heads and saying, yep, we do that too. So what this does 
it's a single source of the truth platform that allows you to track that information. In addition, for those organizations that do PTAP or production part approval process, this is really not just the onboarding of suppliers, but also for those that are aware of this process, it's a workflow-based process that allows you to request that your supplier provide you with objective evidence that they're capable of meeting the requirements for your product. So that's why they call it production part approval. And for those of you that are aware or realize that it's, it's a very, can be a very complex process, one supplier for one particular product may have to provide you with 20 different pieces of evidence. You know, a failure mode and effects analysis, a, a matrix diagram, and all kinds of other things that they have to provide. What this does is it makes it easy to identify what has to be done based on the type of product. And then you can use the ex external collaboration, as we described just a minute ago, to route that assignment to the supplier and they would sit there in their open items list until they do it and the due date would be tracked using escalation to remind them to submit it. So once you go to this extent, once you start basically approving suppliers, there could be an integration. Once you approve a supplier, we have customers that have integrations into their ERP systems that now establish that supplier as an approved supplier. So now the procurement people can start doing business with that supplier because the supplier is now available for them to start working with. Once you establish your suppliers and all the products and services, you can then start doing business with that supplier. So they're going to, you're going to create orders for that supplier to send you shipments of things that you have to inspect. So you can use your own existing inspection tools. And we have some customers that have manufacturing execution systems or ERP systems within which they do the inspections. And then we can integrate with that also. But we also have our own very powerful receiving and inspection application that lets you define what you're, what, and, and typically this would be launched from a purchase order in your ERP system. What do we expect the supplier to provide to us? The material profile over here has actually the acceptance criteria predefined. What are the qualitative and quantitative inspection requirements? So that when you do the inspection, you can check measurements, you can check attributes and make sure it's correct, and you can record the results. It has a sampling planning built into it and all that kind of good stuff. If there's an issue, you can click a button and you can launch a non-conformance report. That happens to be another application that's available on our platform, which allows you to identify product non-conformances and disposition them, make decisions about what has to happen, scrap, rework, return to supplier, use as is, whatever it might be. You're probably familiar with that. But then we can talk about the relationships between this and several other things. So I just wanna harken back to a moment ago where I talked about the connectivity platform genetic. This is really gonna be highlighted here because we have not only the tracking of the issue, whether it's our own inspection or an external inspection with an external system, we have the ability to launch this record automatically, inherit details from the source record into this record, and then based on the workflow and decisions that are being made here, whether those decisions are being made on a case-by-case -case basis by a group of people that might be assigned to a certain step in the workflow, or you can even pre-configure the system to automate decisions based on decisions you already made when, that situ when a certain condition or situation exists. So our system can essentially automate that through our own system and the workflow and assignments to things and or integration with other systems. So one of those things might be, do we need to, uh, is the supplier at fault? Was the supplier in, uh, influenced influencing this problem? And as Angela mentioned, 80% of the issues uh, in quality often come from your suppliers because if you don't manage the incoming quality, it's going to have a direct impact on your own quality. So this is going to allow you to filter that information to reduce the risk of receiving poor quality product into your system. And if there happens to be a supplier issue, you could launch a SCAR right from the NCM and it allows you to assign it right to your supplier. So in a few moments, I'm actually going to log in as a fictitious supplier into their own homepage and show you what that might look like with different assignments that are sitting there for them to complete. In addition to the SCAR, as part of the disposition of the nonconformance, you might determine that it's a use as is uh, disposition, which infers a temporary change to a standard process. So if it was an internal issue, you can launch a record called a deviation request or plan deviation, we call it, which allows you to define a temporary change to a standard process. That ties into another app that happens to be one of the core applications on our platform called Document Control. So you've got an application 
which is a workflow based application for the creation, review, approval, and electronic distribution of documents. So therefore, essentially you have a repository of approved documents and their most recent versions for your end users to access. So what this is, and the power of this is that we had an issue, we had to deviate from that, but there are 10 different documents that we had to identify that temporary change. So instead of having to physically handle those 10 other documents, we've spoken to customers about how they handle deviations now. And oftentimes it's very manual. They send memos out or they put attachments to a traveler or whatever it might be. It's often not efficient and, and it's not often done in the, in the correct manner um, or completely. So what this does, this puts a message into every document. Once the deviation gets approved, an end user goes to look at an approved document there's a message on the top that says this document has an active deviation and it provides a link to that deviation so they can see what that temporary change was. The power of this process is that once the deviation expires, the link and the message disappear for all the documents affected and it's back to business as usual. The other thing we often see is an integration with an ERP or MES so that if you're using the MES to do your manufacturing process, that deviation would be communicated to the operators that are actually doing the process to let them know that it's, that it's in place. And then finally, part of the transactional stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis is you might also launch an internal corrective action. And that was one of the core applications on our platform as well. And that's a very robust workflow for approval of the corrective action, root cause analysis, action planning, completely closed loop connections to any other things that had to be done in, in a response to the corrective action, such as changes to documents or training or whatever has to happen. So that's all completely closed loop. So everything that I've just talked about so far is the relationships between the different processes that would typically occur on a daily day, uh, basis when you're interacting with suppliers. So that means in the process of doing business with your suppliers, you're starting to capture data automatically whether it's within our system or even within an ERP or external systems, you're capturing data that could be inputs into how you rate the supplier. So what we often see with customers prior to implementing our system is that they do it manually. They try to capture all this disparate data from different sources and it's often not efficient and it's often late because there's stuff happening in the meantime once you've taken a snapshot of that data and it's a major challenge to do it efficiently and effectively. Part of the supply chain quality application set that we offer is what's called the supplier rating application. This is an automated supplier rating, not just the supplier, but every single product and service that they provide is actually tracked and rated separately. So therefore, all these transactions are taking place. You're, you're uploading suppliers, you're onboarding them, you're doing audits, you're capturing non-conformance records against that supplier, against the product, scars against the supplier and product on-time delivery and other kinds of inputs from the inspection process. This is all really valuable information, but oftentimes organizations don't have the wherewithal to do anything with it because it's so much data and it takes so much manual intervention to deal with it. So what this does is it runs these things called scoring profiles that are designed to point to different data sources from different places. And you would define the relative percentages of the score from that data that's coming into it and it'll automate it to happen once a month or once whatever frequency you want it to, to pull all the data for that time period, come up with a rating, and then there's another profile called the rating profile. So it comes up with a score first, the scoring profile comes up with 85%, let's say. Well, what does 85% mean? The rating profile says 85% is, is excellent, 95% is exceptional, 75% is good. So it's like between 70 and 79%, for example. What happens is the rating of the product based on real-time data, we would argue, is directly correlated to risk, right? So if you have a high rating for a product, the supplier has demonstrated the ability to comply with your requirements, your risk is low, so you don't have to worry about it as much when you continue to do business with them. The incoming inspection, so there's this feedback mechanism, this feedback loop that takes place where the next time you conduct business with that supplier, the rating might inform what has to happen next. And we even have customers, and, and this might be included in one of the stories that Angela is gonna mention. We have customers that the procurement people, these, these procurement people, they're not part of quality, right? But the information that you're capturing is valuable to them, invaluable to them, because when the procurement person goes to cut a purchase order, 
in the system against a certain supplier for a certain product, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have the ability to query a system like ours to see if there are any quality issues with that supplier or a low rating for the product for that supplier, which means that even before you get out the supplier purchase order, it might flag you and say, you can't order this, or there's a warning in place to let you know that you might have to be extra careful or change the terms of the agreement or whatever it might be. Or if you place the order and it comes in, maybe if it's a low rating, maybe the incoming inspection is gonna automatically clamp down and be more stringent than it would be if it's, a, if it's a higher supplier rating. So what you're doing is saving your organization real time and money based upon the resources consumed when doing inspections, because you're not gonna inspect every single product with the same scrutiny, but you're gonna take a more informed, intelligent approach to doing inspection based upon your actual risk of doing business with that particular supplier. So our goal, when we talk about suppliers and we have several customers that that indicate to us that they can now hold their suppliers accountable because they have the data that's needed to be able to not even hold them accountable to be able to understand what types of issues they're having with that supplier, what the qual what the categories are, but they can work with that supplier to make it better. So it, we would argue that you're not you're not just out there to ding your suppliers. Everyone benefits from higher quality product your process runs much more smoothly, you're expending less resources on doing inspections, they're doing more business with you, so everybody's happy. So this is a really very positive kind of a synergy that can take place with the kinds of relationships that you can work on with your supplier. So we have, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to tell you this story. This is really the high level of how we see these different processes fit together, and the power is, and Angela will mention this, there are customers that can even go as far as charging their suppliers back. So in other words, if you can quantify exactly how much the supplier errors are costing you, you, ha you can hold your suppliers accountable. And we have a, one particular customer in mind that actually does that. It's an extremely powerful uh, process. So that's the, that's the overview. So what I thought I might do right now is jump into uh, a quick demonstration. Are there any questions, Angela, in the uh, in the chat? No, uh, this, that was a fantastic overview. I, I love hearing about um, that uh, that connection, or kind of reinforcing that connection between the supplier rating and the risk levels, um, which kind of I'm not sure if you really touched a whole lot on this, but the the kind of risk register utility. On the platform, it's like kind of one one piece of it. Um, so I, I love hearing, um, you know, tying to because that's that language, the language of business that your colleagues in other areas of the company you can kind of speak that common language and kind of mm -hmm. have those those common ob objectives that you're working towards by by going after supplier quality um, and improving that. Absolutely, thank you. So it's all about the 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 the, the harmonized platform that breaks down the silos. You don't have any silos or, or you know breaks in communication. Everything is in one place, and that's what makes it all so possible. So what I'm doing right now is I'm logging into the system as a fictitious supplier, and this homepage is very purposely very simple. So what would happen is the supplier would initially receive an assignment email that looks similar to this. So this is an example of an assignment to a supplier corrective action. It's got the due date. It has a hyperlink to it. So if the supplier was not logged in, they would receive this email in their current inbox, whatever that whatever that inbox is. And any process on the platform is gonna have a similar look and feel. The same record that was just assigned would also show up as an assignment under the assignment section. So this is a global list for this one supplier of everything that this one person has assigned to them. There's a SCAR, there's a PPAP, there's an audit that they have to participate in, and there's even a training assignment where they have to acknowledge their awareness of a new procedure that you just created in document control that applies to the supplier. So you wanna have objective evidence that the supplier acknowledged that document. So the goal, the idea here is that using that external collaboration capability that I mentioned a few minutes ago, you can incorporate a supplier in any workflow process that you want to. And I'll get to that in a little bit more in just a second. The other thing that I mentioned is whenever you assign something to somebody, I'm just gonna click on this, 
there's always a due date associated with it. So this particular step is overdue, which is why it's red. This is a demo data set, so we don't update our dates on a regular basis. <clears throat> if it was due in the future, it would be blue. What happens is the system knows who it's assigned to, the system's platform level escalation utility can track the upcoming due date, send reminders as the due date approaches. Level one might be to the supplier four days before it's due, just as an example. So if the supplier did not respond to the initial assignment email, if they didn't respond to it when they logged in the next morning and saw that it was there listed as something to do, the system will now start to actively remind them by sending them a reminder email. But escalation wouldn't be escalation unless it escalated the issue if something wasn't getting done in a timely manner. So after the first initial level one escalation, four days before it's due, maybe two days before it's due, it sends a supplier a reminder, but also escalates the level two to the supplier quality engineer within your organization to alert them that something that is not being done by someone that they're responsible for. And there's even a third level of escalation. So the idea is that it's extremely simple. It's very powerful because there's visibility into it and it's, it's sending reminders. The supplier can also interact by clicking on this part. They can then fill in their part of the record. They can you know, put in the categories like this, they can start typing, for example, or they can use the keyword list to fill in fields. They can type stuff, they can attach things, they can attach supporting information if they want to. They also have uh, the ability to attach pictures or whatever it might be, and then they can submit it to you by just clicking on this. This is standard workflow functionality for any process in any application. This is pre-configured to know the due date, it's gonna calculate it, and also it knows who to assign it to internally because in this case, this person is the one that assigned it to the supplier. So the supplier doesn't have any ability to intervene in who it goes to next, but the workflow is gonna automate that. So that's one thing I wanted to just briefly mention, which is what a typical record looks like and how easy it is to interact. The other thing is suppliers can have access to information, but this is filtered automatically based on the supplier name. So this particular supplier is called Metal Depot. This is what's called a view. We have about 350 pre-configured views across the system, but that contextual awareness, which lends itself to external collaboration, gives us the ability to define the location of a certain record. In this case, the location is the supplier. The supplier profile has the same location associated with it. So when Joe Smith logs in to the system, any and all views that have been set up that he has access to are gonna be filtered so they can only see the information that pertains to them. 600 other suppliers could be having access to the same system and in fact, the same view, but because of the dynamic filtering, I don't have to set up different views with different uh, static filters that are built in. As a supplier, I also have access to my current ratings. And as I mentioned, the feedback loop can define what happens next and, and whatnot. So Angela, I'm being mindful of time and I see that we're close to it. So I think I'm gonna just stop right there and uh, pass it back to you. How's that looking? Let me see. Looks good. The train slide. Okay. Oh no, I made the, I, I got ahead of it and and made the reveal, but <laughs> you you uh, you set up the customer story um, during your uh, during your demonstration, uh, and it really is a, a fantastic um, execution of what's possible. Um, and that uh, that first story I wanted to to share with you guys is um, Train Technologies. So they create um, uh, basically in, indoor systems or indoor environments. So HVAC systems for residential and commercial. Um, big player in that market. And they, you know, Tom talked about um, you know the ability once you have these. Um, these processes in place, you are really in a position to hold your suppliers accountable um, and, and really hold kind of both sides accountable um, with the relationship. And Train went all the way <laughs> with this. Um, they, uh, you know, the, the punchline is they leveraged the integration capabilities that Tom um, spoke about and integrated with their ERP system, which was where, um, of course, all their procurement activity and um, a lot of their, well, their supplier data uh, was, was housed there. Um, and they were able to, you know, based on a non-conforming material report, tie that to uh, a supplier, which ties to the, the contract that's in place with that supplier, 
Um, it's connected to the financial part of their ER, ERP. And with a click of a button, they can uh, automate and debit that supplier's account for whatever the agreed upon value um, of that non-conforming material is. So, you know, from a baseline of 240 days to resolve an issue, it's down to, you know, just over a month. And I'm sure it's less now because this data might be a little, little older, but um, just an amazing um, application of what's possible. And, you know, something they, you know, the trained folks always say is like, how big is your imagination? Um, the Reliance platform gives you an amazing canvas um, to tie these processes together, um, not only within quality, but you know, across teams, um, which you know, Tom was, was illustrating um, in that solution overview. Um, and they literally started from, you know, at, at the beginning, it's like everyone kind of knew their piece of, their, their piece of it. Um, you know, the receiving folks kind of had, had their deal and it was like an email and a phone call and a kind of passing off to, to certain people. And, uh, you know, it would just kind of go into this black box and nobody really knew end to end clearly how this um, process worked. And so they brought all stakeholders, uh, everyone who had a, a piece of that process, brought them into the room. They all mapped it out together, realized where um, the gaps were, the miscommunications were happening, where... Um, you know, it just wasn't clear what what should have happened and it, within what time frame. Um, they mapped it completely end to end, cleaned up the process, um, and then brought it into, you know, the platform. Uh, like we kind of talked about at the beginning, it's like, you know, technology can't fix a broken process. It's like you kind of have to go through that um, that manual labor uh, to to sort that out before you bring it into the system. But once you do that. Um, you know, that's not only brought your internal teams closer, but it's going to bring you like, you know, the picture that, that Tom was painting. It's like it brings you so much closer to your suppliers and working together and collaborating. Um, both sides have visibility to, to what's going on and what's expected. Um, and this, you know, effort on trains part, it's, you know, in the order of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars um, that they've been able to um, recoup from from suppliers. Um, otherwise, it was money just kind of, you know, time and money just kind of hemorrhaging uh, from the company. So huge, huge impact, um, and a and a beautiful demonstration of how quality management can bring different areas of the company together um, to you know be more efficient, go after those cost savings. Um, and they were the uh, we do an annual innovation award at our customer event every year and train was um, the winner this year um, based on this um, customization. And they used, I forgot to mention, they used the um, RMA, our return material author authorization application. So they kind of, they took out of the box and configured it um, not for a, um, a, like an end customer facing process. Uh, they configured that to work um, with through supplier relationships. So it was kind of an interesting twist on uh, an out of the box process and making it work for the supplier side. Okay, all right, so the second one, uh, oh my goodness, the time just flies by. So the second one I'll just mention quickly, Ream as well um, took advantage of a lot of this just you know, baked in um, capability within the platform to, to automate and, and harmonize processes. Um, and because of just the visibility they had or you know, were able to achieve, um, they also had huge reduction in the time to address um, supplier corrective actions and get those closed. Um, and that attention and visibility also reduced their audit findings. Um, you know, the, the bad material that was, that's, you know, was coming in the door, uh, they're able to really get a handle on that and, and push that accountability you know, back out to the supplier um, and saved a chunk of change in their inventory carrying costs. So um, big success story there as well with Ream. Okay, I'm gonna move very quickly through the end. Uh, we'll get uh, hopefully to some Q&A as well, um, keeping an eye on that. So if you have any questions, be sure to pop those uh, in the chat or you can always reach out to us uh, after the webinar as well if you have any questions 
just hop over to etq.com and hit the contact us button. Uh, all right, so I just wanted to um, throw out uh, some key takeaways and Tom, I'd love to hear um, your thoughts as well on what you hope folks take away uh, today. I'm hoping they, uh, I'm hoping you guys kind of have you know, a picture in your mind of what you can bring to your own organization about you know, having the shared promise with your suppliers and ways that you can improve those relationships through a technology platform like ETQ Reliance, just improving um, you know, communication and, and having this kind of secure place um, to have those communications and, and have that traceability. And then um, you know, using those costs of quality, identifying those, putting numbers on them to help communicate that impact to the business, because that's what ultimately is going to matter, getting people on board <laughs> to expand your quality system um, into other areas of the company. You're going to need to show that, um, that ROI and that, that impact that it's going to make. So Tom, any kind of parting thoughts there? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, you can't really improve quality unless you know what the quality issues are, whether it's mm -hmm. working with suppliers or working internally. And yeah. what a tool like ours does is it gives you the ability to have everything in one place. It breaks down those silos, uh, which are often challenges in organizations. And it, it allows you to just improve quality over the board, which ultimately you'd speak in the name, you know, the language of upper management is going to improve the uh, the revenue of your company quite honestly i mean you're going to you're going to cut down on those internal costs of quality the, the poor cost of cost of poor quality if you will mm -hmm. and the result of that is making more money for everybody so yeah. that's uh, that's really the idea and yeah. the, you know at a, at a very high level that's what it is without all the d the details and we talked about some of the details before but it's a global platform pulls it all together make better business decisions yep yep Nice, nice way to wrap it up uh, with a with a with a nice bow, Tom. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm getting a two minute warning here. It looks like. Uh, all right, so uh, here's just the it's commercial time, uh, everybody. So wherever uh, you are in your quality journey, we're, we'd love to help. Um, from calculating, like we've been talking a lot about the the ROI, the business case. Wherever you, uh, you are in that process, uh, we'd love to help you map that out, uh, map out your deployment strategy, um, and obviously um, you know, any assistance you need to get up and running, um, or to whatever extent you need assistance, uh, we've got uh, a comprehensive purpose-built QMS um, that can help you reduce costs, streamline operations, build compliance into your processes, mitigate supplier quality risks, big topic for today, <laughs> resulting in improved efficiency, time to market, sustainability, there's that sustainability word again, um, and bottom line results. So love the opportunity to share our expertise in these areas. And you're in good company with ETQ. We've got hundreds of customers of all shapes and sizes across many different industries. Uh, we apply, uh, we take a, a cross uh, pollination approach. We apply learnings and best practices from all kinds of industries to provide um, a unique uh, value to customers uh, with solid, um, battle-tested, out-of-the-box processes. And we've been doing this for over 30 years, uh, empowering quality champions to use quality as a catalyst for business success. And I think that's really um, what we're getting at today is, is leveraging quality um, for success and building competitive advantage uh, for your organization. We've got more webinars in this series. Check it out on our website um, and more to come. We have another one coming up in August. I think we'll be talking, uh, don't hold me to this, this might change, but uh, I think we'll be talking cost of poor quality. Again, we talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago with our friends over at Quality Digest, but we'll be diving into the topic of cost of poor quality next month. And with that, I'm looking to see if we have any questions here. So yes, um, this will be recorded. Uh, you all receive a link. Uh, all registrants receive a link uh, after the session here today. So you can come back and listen later, share with your friends. Or Serial Watch. Or you could, yeah, you could go uh, out to our website there and just uh, binge watch binge every watch. episode. Absolutely. <laughs> if you want more Tom and Angela. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Hopefully this is food for thought um, as you explore your supplier quality journey 
and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, everyone.